you're hearing me if your sound's turned up, but how exactly does the ear hear things? Well, it all starts with vibrations in the air, and that's what causes sound. But to see how we perceive that as sound, you have to have a look inside my ear. And if you do, you see it's a whole collection of tubes, a veritable maze, and that's where part of it gets its name. It's the labyrinth. But we're not interested in the labyrinth for hearing. The labyrinth controls balance. Hearing is uh, done by something else. And in fact, the vibrations in the air come down here and beat upon this large flat structure called the eardrum. It's the reason you don't poke things in your ear. You can put holes in that. And in the middle ear, on the other side of that drum, we've got three bones. If I take those bits out, you can see them. There's one, two, and three. They're called the malleus, incus, and stapes, which simply mean hammer, anvil, and stirrup. And their real sizes are those. They're very tiny bones. They're the smallest bones in the human body. The malleus, the incus, and the stapes. What do they do? Well, they're a lever system. The eardrum is attached to the malleus, or the hammer, and the stirrup is attached to part of the inner ear. But they take the large, weak vibrations of the eardrum here, the ones that I'm making, and transform them into small but powerful vibrations at the stirrup. And they push that into the inner ear. Well, what happens there? In fact, here's the labyrinth, the part involved with balance. We don't worry about that. We're interested in hearing in this part here. It looks like a snail shell, and in fact, if you open it up, you'll find it's a tube, or a rather complex tube, curled round and round and round, two and a half times. If you could uncurl it, it would look something like this. And squizzing down it, you'd see, in fact, it's divided into chambers. It's got two membranes, and it's split into three chambers. The one we're particularly interested in is this bottom membrane, because as the vibrations are pushed into this whole system, that membrane beats up and down. And it has structures on it that I haven't made in that model, but if we took a strip through that membrane, where the lines are, it'd look something like this. Here's the strip. All the way along the membrane are those little hair cells. Called that because each of them has a hair poking out the top. The hair's embedded in another structure, so as the membrane beats up and down, those hairs are alternately tweaked and relaxed. Tweaked and relaxed. And every time they tweak, they fire the cell, and an impulse goes off to your brain to let you know about the sound you've heard. And whether it's a high sound or a low sound, or perceived as that, will depend on which part of that membrane is displaced the most. If it's a low sound, it's going to be displaced at the tip. If it's a high sound, it'll be displaced most at the base. And it's no surprise, I suppose, to find that human speech, in fact, displaces it the most in the middle. And so our ears are designed to hear human speech.